All right, today I wanted to talk about talk about suits, uh, or more specifically, as I will tell you guys, there's I've been watching a whole lot of the clips from the TV show Suits. So, to give you guys some backstory, I don't generally do the whole scrolling app. So this is the the Tickle Talks and um, Twitter. Facebook, I've gotten rid of my Facebook a good while back and haven't gotten into the other one. Instagram, I have not gotten into, luckily. And the reason why is because I know that I would I would get sucked in. It would not be even close. So I know exactly what they're doing. And the reason why they're so good at their doing is the reason why I try have tried to avoid them. But lo and behold, I started using the YouTube app, uh, which is a different different flavor, if you want to call it, as far as social media apps go. But there is an aspect of it, especially when it comes to YouTube Shorts. And what they've done is they've taken all the interesting clips that used to be 3 to 5 to 5 to 10 minutes, and they've converted them down to 30 seconds to 1 minute. Or I think, I'm, I think a minute may be the longest a short can be, but basically we've got 30 seconds to 1 minute is now what they're at. And I started watching some YouTube shorts, like you do. You come across one of them. There's a guy that I watch periodically, which is the... Um, the EMS, the funny EMS fire guy, I don't know what his name is, uh, but he's bald and he's absolutely hilarious and I have family that are EMS and firefighters, so it's fun to watch and see it from there at that point. So I start watching one and much like anything, when you watch one, you watch two and three and four and five and very soon I was probably about 30 minutes into a scroll and watching a gazillion different clips and shorts. And lo and behold, what happened is because YouTube and Google knows that I watched this TV show called Suits, or I watched these longer clips of Suits, they thought, you know what? You've got to love the shorter clips from there. Because I actually did watch the show. I think I watched up to probably one, it was like two or three seasons of the show. And, um, for every reason that makes it good is the reason why it is bad to some degree because every episode, every season, everything follows the same formula. There very much is a formula to the show. And this is the reason why I didn't really care for it because it doesn't really change from there. You can watch, continue to watch the seasons. The characters change, the people change, but everything kind of follows the same thing from there. So what it is, is the, the suits in a nutshell is you have, you know, it's sharp dressed lawyers with quippy retorts argue with each other to dramatic music. This is essentially uh, the boiling it down, but that doesn't really explain why it's so fun and addicting because this is an aspect of it is, even though it's not a great show, this is one of those shows that you would watch, uh, but you would never, you don't really remember it. What you're watching for is how it makes you feel, and because you get to see, kind of like similar to a boxing match or something, you're watching to see someone get beat up, essentially. And this is what it does. It just does it on an emotional and a satisfying uh, level from there. And so what we have in this show is you have Mike. We'll introduce Mike. Mike is oops, a super genius. This is kind of like your, um, crap, what's that? Ben Affleck and Matt Damon movie. Um, I can't think of it. It's the one where he's a genius. Either way, so he has a photographic memory and he's kind of fallen on hard times. He's kind of your, your uh, token token poor person, essentially. This is the rags to riches, but he's a genius. He's a photographic memory, and he spends his time taking the bar, which is the lawyer exam, for rich people. And they pay him lots of money, and he goes in there. And because he's got everything memorized, and he's actually an excellent lawyer, because he knows all the rules, and he's studied to do this, he can take it for him and make lots of money this way. And this is him. And he ends up getting hired by a gentleman whose name is Harvey, Harvey Specter, who's a lawyer, a senior partner, I think, or he becomes partner, either way, he's an important lawyer at this one law firm who really, he has um, kind of a spiky stylized hair at the front here. So it's kind of like this, like that. And he's got a face here and he's got eyeballs and he's got a nose and ears and he's got this spiky here and then it's kind of like that very fancy and he has the jaw he kind of has that jaw and he's got a great smile from here 
you know, with gleaming teeth and the shine from his teeth. There we go. So Harvey hires him because he's interesting and because he has a great memory. And it, honestly, it's more so be, it would be fun. So they become, he becomes the junior associate under Harvey. And they have this whole cast of characters. You have Donna, who's the sassy, uh, sassy secretary uh, from there. And then you have Lewis, who's the uh, most, he's about 85% percent sob and then about 10 percent um a ally and then five percent uh, uh michael scott we'll say michael scott uh, but he kind of acts as the antagonist slash ally he kind of oscillates back between and you have jessica who is the head lawyer lady, and he, she is very much an ally, but fierce, and they all fight against each other, and with each other, and against each other, and kind of from here. And so, generally, the way an episode will work is what you have here is you have a client. There'll be a client with an issue or something like this. And this doesn't actually, the formula doesn't even really matter for this. The whole reason you watch the show and what the show is written to be built up to is what you have is you'll have a smug character. This is usually a smug lawyer character from here. Smug lawyer at this point. And smug lawyer goes in and says something along the lines of, you know, usually they'll say something along the lines of, my client has lawful right to throw mud on your food or something like that. It's just some sort of, usually it's some sort of dick or bully move at this point. And there's really a lot of lording over the, um, lording over our main characters, Mike and Harvey. And so what you end up with is you end up as the audience, we deal with a lot of resentment and we're looking for a payback. And this is the interesting thing about stories is because what you can have is you can have feelings that you normally can't and shouldn't feel. So let's say when you're feeling cocky and confident and you want to lord it over somebody, um, you really shouldn't do that. That's kind of a, a generally a no-no from there. But what you can do is because this is a story, you can create all the scenarios, in which case then, you know, rubbing it in, you know, I told you so, all these different things, you get to craft a message and a situation which gives you every moral right to do all this stuff. And this is what it does. So, Smug Lawyer does this, he's a bully or something like that. And then the episode is spent usually in, there's kind of these different waves where they go, sweet from here, and then from here, and then from here, something like that. There'll be ups and downs, essentially. They'll be like, ha, we have the upper hand. Nope, they're going to do this, lower hand. The client will do something stupid, lower hand from here. We got something smart, upper hand. Nope, all goes right. And then usually what'll happen is right at the very end, it'll go to the lowest point. And then at this point, then it goes all the way back up. And of course, it's success from here. Um, from And this is usually the way, this is the way a lot of plots will go, and this is what usually this will do. And so what you do then at this point is once they have the upper hand, Mike and Harvey will essentially, they will bully the bully. They will rub it in, they will insult them, they will not, they are not necessarily what you would call gracious winners, where they're like, listen, we have our differences, you said some things that were unpleasant, however, let's go, you know, I'm going to be the bigger man. There's not too much of that, really. Basically, they will rub it in. They will destroy them. And what it'll do is often is during the dialogue, the bully, before they flip the table, you know, at this point, all hope will be lost. And then they'll do one of those things that happens in movies where it's like, wait a minute. I have an idea. And then they'll just run off. And then the other person is like, what? What's your idea? And they'll chase them down the halls and they're like, oh my gosh, we have no time. We have absolutely no time. We're going to run, rush. We got to rush. And this is the other thing they always do. They're always in a hurry. They're constantly in a hurry to and fro and everything like that. We're constantly in a hurry at this point. And so they'll run off and they'll run off with their big idea and then they'll schedule a meeting with the bully. And then we, the audience, are waiting to see what's going to happen because we know that Mike or Harvey have some sort of what you would call a silver a uh, bullet of sorts. They have a silver bullet that's going to defeat smug guy, the smug guy and all of his smugness. And then they'll start having a conversation. And then the smug guy is like, ha, you know, here to lose again, loser from there. And usually that translates to in the show, you know, 
Uh, my client has only agreed to this deal to, to laugh in your face before this deal goes through that makes us gazillions of dollars, you know, $200 million or something like that at that point. Um, and so what you've got here is you, you're setting it up. The bully keeps putting, setting themselves up and putting their foot in their mouth. They keep setting it up. Not only that, and they keep digging and digging. And the audience is wanting to, you know, go for the kill, go for the kill, get them. You know, there's this get them aspect where it's like, Let's destroy them. He's a bully. He's smug. He's insulting us. Let's get him back. And this is when, when Harvey or Mike will flip, you know, flip out claws, you know, 729C or something like that. And this means that my client gets to do literally whatever they want or something like that. You've forgotten the bylaws. So everything is rewritten at this point. The dramatic music cues and then the smug person is now stunned. They are completely stunned and utterly defeated. And then, and again, if you watch these, uh, Mike and them will rub it in. They're just rubbing it in. And this is what I get back to, this, this interesting aspect of you don't want to be a bully unless you're bullying the right person. In which case, then, it's actually quite fun to be the bully. You know, this is the reason why bullies do it. And so what it is is you do this, and when I talked about this aspect of this episode, you know, with these up moments and down moments and everything, this is, you know, stress, stretched out over, what, 43 minutes or something like that. Um, what you end up coming to is you come up with a lot of down moments and a lot of needless drama and stuff like this. And this is the reason why I didn't really care the show, because here's the thing. The good and the bad part about Suits is the formula is that, where, like, you know, Bully does something uh, jerkish, and then ticks off Mike and Harvey, and then they have a few more moments of, well, now you've really done it. Uh, the client will do something dumb or dump something different, and then they'll realize something, and then they'll lose something again at this point. And then, of course, the upswing, where they then are victorious, and you win. And this upswing, think of this in terms of the it's not really relative to where you started so even though the upswing may be that you wound up right back where you were it's relative to where you were previously so because you went down so far now you're coming back up that's really what makes the difference for the audience we want to see them triumph in relation to the fall that's why the reason why you have this fall usually at the very end when all hope seems lost and so what the clips do is they just cut all this bull this stuff out. And usually what they are, the way they're situated is, is, you know, Mike shows, Harvey proves, rubs it in, something like that, where the characters will come in and the guy, smug guy, will just be smug. And then some amount of TV show, action, drama, story, exposition, backstory, dialogue will happen. And that's basically the whole episode. And then at the very end, Mike and Harvey will come in there and they'll have this like <laughs> mic drop moment. No, no uh, pun intended. Um, and that's what the show is built around is these drop moments where it's like, man, you owned him. You said this, you said that because they've set it up and they can have, you know, the author in this is playing both sides. You know, you play both sides of the, uh, debate and the argument in order to set up the biggest mic drop moment from there where you can really own them, say this, you know, could set it, make them eat their words from there. And this is what you get. And this allows the audience, we, the audience to feel, to be essentially kind of like a righteous bully to some degree, um, from there where you're, you're able to dish it back out. You don't have to just take it on the chin. You can be just as insulting, just as mean, and just as vicious as your opponent, but they did it first. So they got what's coming to them and they were really smug about it. So, you know, this is a dynamic and this is what makes them so addicting. This is what it is. And this is also the reason why once you see this and get this formula, it's this formula times, what, 20 episodes a season times eight or 10 seasons from there. The only difference is what they'll do is they'll change it up. They'll change who the bad guy is. Maybe it's, you know, they do this where they have this revolving door of the characters hating each other, where Mike will be pissed off at Harvey, who will be pissed up at Donna, who will be pissed off at Jessica, who will hate Lewis. Lewis and Harvey will hate each other a lot, and then Lewis and Mike, and then Mike and Harvey, Mike, and, and it's just this constant thing where they're introducing new characters and introducing old characters and all this stuff, and they'll cycle through it, all to have and replay this formula where someone will have this mic drop moment from there. And that's what the show is all about. That's how it works. That's how, why it's addicting. That's why watching the clips are addicting from there. Uh, but yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoy this one, and I will see you in the next.